that's that's real teaching. That's what happens. Something happens, and every child, especially with little ones, right? Especially with little ones. Um, older kids, they do a little better. Where it's like, oh, there was a thing that happened. But some kids are like, no. Especially the younger they are, the most minute disruption is a huge deal to them until they get used to it. You know what I mean? Some things, after a while, they just they're meaningless. But Oh my goodness, a bee in the classroom is, y'all have been in classrooms in high school, and doesn't everybody wig out when there's a bee in the yes. classroom, no matter what? It does not matter what age you yes. are, there's a bee in the classroom. I got a hummingbird stuck in my class one time. Oh my god. Some of the things that have happened in my classroom are wild, but the day I got a hummingbird stuck in there was pretty memorable. And the day that one of my students, I had a third floor office um, at the high school that I was not in all the time. I was at the middle school most of the day, and I was at the high school only during like third or fourth period, and then back again at the end of the day. And sometimes I didn't come back there, depending on the schedule or what was going on at the end of the day, if I didn't have an ensemble after school. You know what I mean? So it might be a couple of days until I came back. One of my students one time, they had those windows that like most high schools have where they open out like this. You know what I mean? And so every once in a while, and this had happened, a bird flew into my office and then couldn't get back out. They have a hard time getting out those windows. They can get up in them and they fly in, but getting out is just like the worst thing in the whole world. They can't see that all they have to do is go bloop, and there they are on the roof. And they have wings, so they can fly even if there wasn't a roof down there. But for whatever reason, it's really... So this bird wigged out and it cracked all over all of my stuff. Like there was bird crap everywhere, and there was stuff, and it blew all over the place because the windows were left open. And yeah, it was, it was a special, a special day. I have like kids see your pictures that I don't even have anymore because bird pooped on them. So I was like, mm -hmm. hummingbird, bees. Um, the time a kid um, tore her ACL in my class. You know, it's like random stuff. Kid having a diabetic seizure in my class one time. Things happen. You get used to it. And then, you know, they make the list of like crazy stuff that's happened, but you're like, oh yeah, I've seen that. That's no big deal. All right. So, oh no, I want that. I want that to stay. That's going to be so much fun. All right. So, I was saying before, I am not a great teacher. That was my hair. Um, I was showing my friends, I was like, y'all, I've got a problem because my hairline has a lot of gray hair in it. I was like, yeah, that's real. It's like gray hair, gray there, they're like really nuts. I was like, I see it. It's here and it's like all over the place. Should I start dying? I don't know. Do I go gray naturally? I'm just not sure. All right, so in our objectives, in our objectives, everybody really latched on to the concept of objective statement and context and extent very well. All of the things that you wrote, they were generally correct as to what that was. It was the connection to the standard that was the weird thing, right? So what y'all took to heart, what I noticed was that everybody wanted to do a perform, a respond, and a create. So you thought like, okay, the three things I want you to do are create one that's a performance, one that's a response, one that's a create objective. I saw that common trend through almost everybody's things. But your standard is in a perform, respond, or create thing. That's where the standards come from. So that's the thing that I was, I, when we're talking about performing, responding, or creating, that's what I mean. So let's go back to the standards real quick. Um, hit me. I'm not going to be able to do this forever. I'm old and sitting crisscross cross applesauce hurts anymore after about 10 minutes. So somebody will remind me, be like, move. Because I'm going to get up and like my hips going to be out of joint or something. Okay, cool. So, so creating is up here at the top. When you have a standard that is one of these things, all of your objectives that are related to it, they're going to be creating types of activities. Right? So, pump the boat, let's find one. There we go. And I think some of y'all had something that was like this. Improvise rhythmic, melodic, and harmonic ideas and explain the connection to specific purpose and context. 
like a social, cultural, or historical context. Why would we do this in the way that we're doing it? Um, so in this case, because the, the words here are improvised, that's a creating verb. It's in a creating standard. All of the learning objectives that you create based off of this standard should be ones that are like write, compose, improvise, other things, arrange, you know what I mean? Other things that are related to that. Um, and then what you're actually working with, like what you want to use that, those creating verbs for then, are things like, all right, they need to, they need to create a rhythm or a melody or a harmony that has something to do with the purpose or connection that they have to the music. Like in this case, I might say, hmm, this is what grade? Fifth grade. If I wanted my students to create a four bar rhythm that could be used for a dance, right? That could be used for a dance. What types of rhythmic values do you think they would use for a dance? Let's say it's a fast dance and not like a slow dance where you leave room for the Holy Spirit, <laughs> right? What types of rhythms do you think they'll use or the should they use? Would they use faster durations or slower durations? Probably for like an upbeat dance, you try to make a bop or something that people are going to move to, you're probably going to do something a little bit faster. So if I want them to create a rhythm that's for a dance, I want them to create something that makes sense that you could dance to, right? As opposed to like, I don't know, four bars of whole notes. That's a little harder to dance to, right? I mean, I suppose you could. You're like really gonna go free, make that happen. Um, but if you wanted to have something that like had some lilt to it, you'd probably want to use some fast iterations, maybe some syncopation, right? Get a little shoulder pop in there. That's certainly something that I'd want fifth graders to be able to do. They should know about syncopation at that age. So that's creating, and they're creating a rhythm that has a purpose. That's what that standard is about. So I think that was the thing that we kind of missed a little bit, was like, what's the standard actually about? And some of y'all got it some of the time, but in trying to make a performing or a response objective, it was like, okay, the purpose of the standard is gone now. So it was like, oh, it's not really connected. It's sort of tangentially, you know, connected to the standard. And that's my fault. I, I just didn't explain that very well. But the good thing is, the great thing is, here's what I wanted. I wanted to see that y'all could do objectives that had a overt verb, a condition or extent, and a context, and that you knew what those were. All of you did that. That's perfect. So that's what I really wanted to know out of the, that was the purpose of the assignment. I just gave you, and I just gave you the standard to sort of serve as an underpinning thing. So y'all are like worried that you didn't connect or, oh, I got it wrong. It's like, man, that's okay. That's okay, y'all wrote, wrote good objectives. Um, but it's really hard to come up with them on your own. If I just said, guys, write me three objectives. I was like, hmm, I don't know. Will that feel overwhelming to them? Maybe that's what I should have done. And just said, write three objectives, guys. And make one a performing, make one a responding, make one a creating one, right? Because uh, y'all did that. And you did it really well. So that's good. So don't feel like you did a poor job. You did a great job. Um, what questions do y'all still have about objectives? Do you feel like you need more practice with them? You're not sure. Is that what I'm getting? You don't know whether you need more practice? I feel okay about objectives. You feel okay? Julie, I see like... Oh, I was just going to say like the only thing like is connecting the standard to it. Mm -hmm. That's like the only thing that I... Because I, I can come up with random ideas and all, all day and 
put it in the format that I need to. Cool. That's totally fine, but you know. Okay, we're going to go to Savannah then. We're going to go to Savannah's plans, I think. If I can find Savannah's plans. Do y'all know Savannah? Mm -hmm. She is out student teaching right now. So we're going to look at some of her like real life. Oof. Hold on. Let's go over here instead. Let's try some of these ones. Um, Savannah. Let's see if I can get her help. I'm all over the place. Don't believe Savannah when she ever says that. It was fine. Everything that she had was great. But it's Savannah. Sometimes she thinks she's not doing well when she's really doing great. Okay, so let's look at somebody's learning objectives. Students will perform literature containing skips from so to do, do to so. Students will speak and sing literature and rhythms containing 16th notes. In the classroom that she's in, 16th notes, they're syllable. You know how some of us use one e and a, two e and a? They use ticka ticka. Some people use takadimi. Some people use all their stuff. In the classroom she's in, they use ticka ticka. That's what the kids call them. So that's why she's got that there. Students will identify which iconic notation represents the rhythms in Chicken on a Fence Post. And then students will use iconic notation to create rhythms containing 16th notes. All right, now imagine you're the teacher. Imagine you've got to teach Savannah's lesson. If you're thinking, what are they going to do? Well, this one's a, it's pretty clear. We know what we want the kids to be able to sing. We don't know what song we want them to sing, but we know that it contains skips from do to so, and we want them to do it accurately, which she doesn't really have in there. So it's something that she could probably revise to make it more clear. Yeah? A little bit. Okay, students will speak and sing literature and rhythms containing 16th notes. Accurately or correctly. Students will identify which iconic notation represents the rhythms in Chicken on a Fence Post. Ooh, that was kind of there, right? We know that it has to represent the rhythms in Chicken on a Fence Post. So essentially it's match. Gotta be the same as. And then use iconic notation to create rhythms containing 16th notes. We know that it has to contain 16th notes. Okay, so she's got some extents that are implied and some ones that are actually stated. Okay, so here are her Alabama standards. So she's got one, plan and make. The standard is use iconic or standard notation and or recording technology to combine, sequence, and document personal musical ideas. Which one of Savannah's learning objectives connects with this Alabama standard? We've got one, two, three, and four. Which one goes with plan and make? The fourth one. The fourth one, right? Because it is to make a thing. They are creating something. That's the plan and make standard. Yeah, that's one of the ones under create. All right, how about in performing? Read and perform rhythmic and melodic patterns, sorry, my Great Lakes came out there, patterns, patterns, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> read and perform rhythmic and melodic patterns using iconic or standard notation. There might be more than one, maybe. Which one or ones go with number nine? The first two. Perform and speak and sing, right? So they are reading or performing rhythmic or melodic patterns. You got it. One and two. Ten minutes. Oh, thank you. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, it's good. My hinges don't work real well. I have very little cartilage left in my knees and hips, so sometimes the things I want to do are not things that I can do very well. It's just, don't get old, stay young forever. All right, demonstrate how interests, 
knowledge and skills relate to personal choices and intent when creating, performing, and responding to music? I don't know, y'all. I don't know where she got that one from. Because honestly, I would say one, two, and three work really well for the Sanalyze one, right? Am I wrong about that? I don't know what hits this one. I mean, maybe when they're creating their rhythms, like choosing, like using their knowledge from what they just did to... Maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe that's it, right? Because I'm like, wait, hold on. I know one and two, so three is like, no. They're identifying, so they're using iconic notation to sort of re, there it is, that's where it is, right? Number three, when they're decoding the iconic notation, they're reading. And so I think that's why that goes with number nine and the analyze bit. And then maybe when they're creating, that's how they're connecting to something that they're interested in. I guess we have to go further in the lesson plan to figure out how that standard applies in this case. So when we go in here, we're like, all right, Oh yeah, these are, are these early? I don't know, maybe they are. Chicken on the fence post can't dance Josie. Chicken on the fence post can't dance Josie. Chicken on the fence post can't dance Josie. Hello, Susan Brownie. Oh, here we go. That's the song she's teaching, by the way. Um, that little one. It's got a great game that I love to play that you like can't play in COVID times anymore because you literally have to make a fence with your arms and you have to touch other people. So, can't play it now. All right, anyway, so here it is. Lead students to discover pizza iconic notation. That's where it is. So the students are connecting their knowledge of pizza toppings, like pepperoni. They're trying to learn tikka tikka, pepperoni, jalapeno, right? Peppers, peppers, sausage, sausage, cheese, 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 sauce. I don't know. Um, whatever it is, right? For their quarter notes, their eighth notes, and they know quarter notes, eighth notes, and quarter rests already, but they're learning to discover the idea that like four sounds occur on one beat. So right now she's using pepperoni, and they're going to create with pepperoni or jalapeno if they're vegetarians, perhaps, right? Because maybe they don't like pepperoni. Although something I learned when people did pizza rhythms back in North Carolina was that depending on what part of the South that you're in, ham can be a one or two syllable word because this little second grader absolutely argued to, like down to it with one of my students about how hey um was two syllables. <laughs> ham, ham, hey um, hey um, hey um, hey um. I was like, all right, girl. Let her have her hang up. <laughs> it's two syllables to her. Let it be two syllables, man. I mean, it was an applicable rhythm. You said they could do quarter notes or eighth notes, and if she wants hang up to be, let her have it. Let her have her hang up on her pizza. <laughs> it's great. Let's do Dialects. Bacon instead. Huh? Just do bacon. Bacon, instead. bacon, bacon, bacon. Hang up, hang up. God. There are times when I miss North Carolina a lot. There are other times where I'm like, you know, not so bad. I like Alabama. <laughs> the fact that it's like 70 degrees today is making me pretty happy. All right, so we do see where this whole, ah, yeah, they're going to demonstrate how their interests, knowledge, and personal choices that they can make. So now we've got there, that's how she did it. She connected to their personal experience by having them use pizza toppings they were familiar with to use that as a creation device. So now I get why she's got that standard in there. Let's look at some other real ones. Let's look at other people's real lesson plans. And then, you know, does that help a little bit? Looking at people's yes. lesson plan objectives and saying, here's how it actually connects to the standards. Let's look at someone else's. How about, do I have all of Trenton's? Hmm. I don't know if I have his lesson plan. No, I do. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but Because Trenton has a different, um, he has a different, uh, la, 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 focus. Like, Savannah is in the elementary classroom, and um, Trenton is in the high school, uh, high school band realm. So, it's going to be very different. Boop. That's for 
first idea. We don't want to use that anymore. Okay. Trent, God bless you. Any of you that know Trenton, thorough. Mm -hmm. It's thorough, y'all. It's thorough. It's a lot happening here. All right, students will perform a one-pitch solo over changes that use a variety of rhythms. All right, first off, our verb is perform. perform. So we know that in our standards, let's look up our standards. Let's go at it a different way. I'm going to do the 2014 NACME standards. And because we've got an ensemble, right? We're dealing with a band, and it is going to be ensemble. This is a band where he is teaching them how to improvise over 12 bar blues with like Lydian and bebop dominant scales and all kinds of crazy stuff, right? So I'm gonna go in either the accomplished or advanced category for this because I don't think we're having novices do this stuff. So. We're having them perform. Let's skip over the creating bit for right now because his thing is perform. All right. It gets a little heavy. It gets a little heavy here. Let's see what fits. Let's make this big and decide which one makes sense. Develop and apply criteria to select varied programs. Does that seem like the one? Probably not, right? They're performing one note solos. That's probably not going to be our standard. Examine, evaluate, and critique using music reading skills. Nope, that ain't it either. Demonstrate how understanding the style, genre, context of varied repertoire informs prepared and improvised performances as well as technical skill. Maybe we're getting warmer, right? We're getting warmer. is addressing rehearsal techniques. That's not it. I don't want that one. Demonstrate an understanding and mastery of the technical demands of expressive qualities. That's not it. Demonstrate an ability to connect with audience members before and during the process of engaging with. That ain't it. Uh-uh. That ain't it. None of that is it. Mm -mm. So what is it? What's he doing? Is this it? Demonstrate how understanding the style, genre, and context of a very repertoire of music informs prepared and improvised performances? Where's the one where they just do the thing? We should have one, right? Hmm. Anybody? Viewer? Wow. Present. Demonstrate attention to technical accuracy and expressive. I mean, is that it? Is that the one? That's what they're doing? They're performing? They're performing a one note solo? I guess that's it. That's the closest we're going to get to the right thing. Things get crazy when we get up into the, the high level stuff. They want you to go past just like, what are the right notes and the right rhythms with this advanced group? Now then again, you know what they are doing? They're improvising a one note solo, aren't they? Ooh, so are they really? They're performing a one note solo, and perform was our verb, but is it really a creating activity? Let's go back. What do you think? Perform a one pitch solo over changes that use a variety of rhythms. Is that a create? What do you guys think? Thumbs up if you think it's a create. I think it could be. Yeah. Like if you're wanting to create it, like is he? Go ahead, ask the question. Good. This All is right. good. Yes. All right, so like 
is is the student like getting to improv on this, or like is the performance like it's something written down? It's not written down. It's so, not written down at all. So if they get to create the rhythms, I guess that'd be create potentially. Okay, so Trenton tricked us, didn't he? He tricked us. He was like perform a one note solo, mm -hmm. but it's not a written down one note solo. It's something that they've got to come up with out of their own head. So sometimes the verb can be a little bit deceiving. I originally went to, I was like, okay, let's look in the performance thing because it says perform, let's go there. But really when we dial down into what we're asking the kids to really do, they're coming up with something out of their own head. All right, so let's go back to create. Compose and improvise musical ideas for a variety of purposes and contexts. Hey, we found our standard. Look at that. That's awesome. So every once in a while, the verb will throw you off where you have to really look at it and go, what am I really asking these kids to do? And is that a creating behavior, a responsive behavior, or a performing behavior? I'm looking so that I remember to like, I've had enough time with my leg down and now I'm good. I can go back. All right, let's look at somebody else's. Let's look at another one. Uh, da, 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 da. How about, these are people who I know have like, I want Abby. I want Abby. Let's get Abby's stuff. Don't tell me I don't have it because I totally have it. All right. Excuse me, everybody. I just get a little angry sometimes. Okay. Here we go. While playing a game of flashcards, students will identify instruments by sight. Students will. Categorize note cards with instrument names and pictures into appropriate families. Wood, brass, string, percussion. Students will use note cards to categorize each instrument as blown, buzzed, struck, plucked, or bowed. And then students will create an ensemble that includes an instrument from each method of sound production. That's this person's lesson. This is Abby's lesson. This was back in North Carolina, so their standards are different than ours. Um, the North Carolina standards came out before the 2014 national standards came out. I think they debuted theirs in like 2011 or something, so it's like three years behind. They haven't updated them since then, which is kind of fine. North Carolina has it, so they're, they're very, they do their own thing, which is fine most of the time, except when it isn't, and then I like to complain about it. All right, so these kids were performing below grade level for sure. Like this was content, she taught this in a middle school general music class. And you're probably thinking, this is stuff I learned in general music when I was a younger kid, right? Like probably third or fourth grade before your symphony orchestra visit, usually you do a lesson on timbre where your teacher teaches you all the instruments of the orchestra. So you know your elbow from your rear end when you watch the performance. Yeah, that's about right. That's typically what happens. That's usually around fourth grade for like almost everybody. Sometimes it's younger, sometimes it's a little older. But these kids, for whatever reason, they just really struggled with this. Like they didn't know. And even after this unit, no matter how many times Abby tried to reinforce that the saxophone has a blown into wooden reed that made air do this, a lot of them still categorized it as a brass instrument because the body is made out of brass. It's just really hard for them to get over that. She drilled down to it, but she still couldn't get every kid on that same train where it was like, it's a woodwind, here's why. All right, so let's look for the standards of these things. They're, they're categorizing instruments by, by like type. Which of the standards has that? It's probably not gonna be creating, right? Probably responding in some way, shape, or form. Let's see if we can find it responding. We're going to drill down to the right place and say, all right, 
Let me try and find it. All right, let's see. This is selecting music for a specific context. Demonstrate and explain how selected music connects to and is influenced by specific interests. Not this one. Demonstrate how, no, probably not that one either. Identify the context of music.